All right, good morning, everybody. And welcome to those of you from around uh, the region. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Donald Briley, uh, part of FPT Far East. We're based in Singapore and uh, happy to bring you this uh, great webinar this morning. Um, today, we're gonna be focusing on industrial spray nozzles. And uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, thank you again. Just some, some notes about the process. During the presentation, please feel free to type in your questions uh, into the Q&A box, and we'll try and attend to them during the presentation, uh, either responding um, by typing out the answers, or at the end of the presentation, we'll go through those questions and, and Mark, our guest speaker, will, will then answer those directly. If there are things that we need to come back to you with, uh, we'll reach out to you separately and probably email you or give you a phone call afterwards if it's a more technical question that we need to get some details on. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mark Jellico. Uh, he is the spray drying and application specialist from Dalavan. Uh, he'll give us a, a great run through this morning of industrial spray nozzles and share his uh, experience and application knowledge uh, so, so we can at least share this valuable information. Uh, Mark has been working with Dalavan for the past five years uh, and he has applied his expertise to many industrial applications worldwide in his consulting capacity. Uh, Mark's experience uh, has been developed over the past 30 years of applying innovative engineering technologies, uh, working with senior manage in senior management roles, various companies across process equipment, including reactors, mixers, evaporators, product filtration, dryers, dust filtration, uh, and thermal control technologies. So a wealth of knowledge uh, and a wealth of experience. So we really look forward to uh, his presentation this morning, and uh, he will give us a, a bit more detail about uh, Dalavan and the company itself. So welcome, Mark. Thank you. And we look forward to, to your presentation. Take it away. Okay. Thank you, Donald. Thank you for your introduction. Um, hello to everyone in Asia Pacific. Um, it's a, a dark, <laughs> cloudy day here <laughs> in the UK. But um, yeah, so my name's Mark Jellico. Um, I'm with Delavan. So Delavan is uh, a member of U United Technologies company. So we're a 64 billion uh, pound corporation. Uh, we also belong to Raytheon Technologies. So what does that mean? So within a, a, an engineering and technology uh, company, we have vast amount of um, links with innovation of technology, um, computer assessment, computer modeling. Um, we use the Pratt & Whitney uh, test engine unit to assess droplet and spray performance, where they utilize that facility for assessing uh, fuel droplet uh, assessment and how we advance um, our technologies to make sure that what, what equipment we do offer uh, provide that uh, expertise to our customers. And that's being um, leveraged really well uh, during this pandemic um, as we go forward with, with a lot of new technologies and a lot of new innovation. So thank you. Um, I have uh, a whole number of samples here. So um, during the presentation, uh, I can uh, uh, stop and, and discuss different um nozzles with you to show you how effectively they're made and, and, and manufactured. Okay. So nozzle technology um, and the selection of, of nozzles are really where um, the first assessment is um, you need to be able to measure a flow, you need to know what type of uh, fluid properties your um, spray wants to have and part of that is also that spray whether you want it to be a spray pattern or you want it to have a droplet formation 
um, um, and how is it controlled and how do you maintain it? Uh, one of the other areas about nozzles is whether you want them to have um, an impact cleaning or a coating performance. So a lot of criteria in terms of how the nozzle is, is, is set in the piece of equipment, whether it's positioned correctly. Uh, so I, I can do a lot of those assessments for, for customers. And as I said, we, we work with probably over 500 OEM manufacturers. So I work with all those in terms of assessing um, what the nozzle's performance is going to be and how it's got to be maintained. Okay, next slide. So um, the main aim for when you want to have a nozzle is it's got to have some sort of energy and that's mainly a, a pressure or a hydraulic and it can be a single fluid or a, a dual fluid. Um, and so that energy either comes from a, a pump or it can come from, we can also calculate it from a header tank, but you've got to know what type of um, friction loss you, you're going to have in your pipe work, the fluid characteristics, um, and um, that enables us to, to be able to provide a, a starting point to say, if you have got mains water, it's two bar, we can then uh, do a selection criteria based on that. We also do um, air atomizing or dual fluid nozzles where you're then using the energy of a compressed air or steam. Now when you use steam instead of air you'll need four times as much steam as you would air because if you think about uh, the utilization of the energy that you need to create a spray is um, uh, if you're using air, it's like using a sharp knife. If you're using steam, it's like using um, a blunt wooden uh, stick. So those are the comparisons. So this is what uh, we would start if you wanted to use steam rather than air. Okay. Next slide. So what these are hydraulic nozzles or pressure nozzles. And you can have two different formats. You can have um, a high pressure design or a low pressure or a medium one. So depends on the type of um, spray pattern that you want. So the most common are uh, flat sprays, solid cones and hollow cones, each with their each distinctive shape. So these are normally Utilized, so it depends whether you've got solids uh, within your uh, spray or your fluid. So we'd use different technologies to make sure that if you've got solids, we need to protect the solid cone core. So I just show you inside here. So in here, you can see that that's got a core that's inserted into it, and that'll create a, a hollow that creates a solid cone. So what, what that does is it, it creates a swirling motion within the, within the nozzle and that's designed um, for something like a, um, a fume glass uh, breaker. So you can have different technologies to create different solid cone formats. Here's another one, a smaller one. So again, it's, they all have a, a core in, and this is why we would ask the customers, well, what, what are your um, solids? What's the biggest size of solid? And then we can make sure that that isn't going to create an issue for you. And it depends also what type of pressure. Okay. Um, next slide. So once you want to know which type of nozzle you want to choose, so we need to know what your flow rate is, what's the maximum flow rate, 
what type of pressure you have available, um, what type of um, spray do you want to have, the pattern, the format, um, what, what's the essential um, key objective that you want the nozzle to perform. So then we have a look at the type of liquid that you may have, whether it's got a high specific density, whether it's highly viscous, whether it gets affected by temperature, um, whether it, it has um, a high corrosion uh, capability. So then we need to have a look at material science. So we look at how uh, the, you want to have a continuous processing with the same spray pattern. So certain customers will say, yeah, we want to put that nozzle into the plant and we want it to run for a continuous operation for uh, seven days without stopping, without maintaining, without looking at it. So we'll look at all those different characteristics and we'll look at what type of uh, nozzle and spray do you actually need? And, and that's the, the best thing of how we look at the final application to make sure that that's going to be the nozzle to uh, give you the best life cycle performance on the, on the nozzle. Okay. So you can see here, again, we've got flat sprays. These are ACs. So ACs are the most uh, typical nozzle. So we can have those with uh, a slot and, and we can make those have anything from a pencil angle. You can have 65, 120. We can design the nozzle to have uh, a very tight um, control. So on an AC, that's with an, a normal pressure and the AZ is with a, like a um, a delafit type where you can change the, the head in the nozzle and we can have those with a very high pressure so you can work at 30 bar um, but again it's it's knowing how far you want the nozzle to be positioned where you want it to be sighted so we have a, a, a chart where we look at the spray angle where it's associated and we look at the overall pattern. Now the AN nozzle, which is that, that. So you can see that um, your fluid can come straight through the nozzle and it's just really a deflecting. But that's designed, that head is designed so it, it gives a precise spray format. So it has um, um, a qualified spray area and we can design that to, to however you want that layout to be. And the DJ nozzle is basically like a, an opening in a nozzle and that again is to prevent a, a, a relative, relatively low pressure type format and it gives a nice sort of washing um, performance. That's really what flat sprays are more generally used. They're, you know, they're a, an easy format nozzle. Okay, next one. So we'll use them in uh, washing or dust suppression, um, anything from controlling, but you can see the picture, it's, it's creating that uniform spray. Um, so it's almost like creating a thin film and we can control how, how thick that film is and that can then you'd be utilized in roll lubrication or descaling. Um, or air drying, um, even customers are now using it to, uh, because of climate change, we're using them on air condensers, spraying uh, the drift eliminator on um, air condensers. So you have, you're affecting the, the dry, the wet dry bulb temperature uh, and enables uh, better cooling on certain plants. Uh, so people are where they, they get into problems in, in hot, hot winter, they can spray those over a 
a fan based unit. Um, we're using in mind um, uh, painting and even sort of very basic tablet coaters. Okay, that's flat sprays for you. So when it comes to looking at uh, an application, you can sometimes have uh, a whole series of nozzles that are put together. So then we'll calculate um, whether you're getting nozzles with agglomeration. So uh, this is a, an AL nozzle, but we can, we can customize any type of unit to either have three nozzles or two nozzles. We can build manifolds or pipe systems for you so that you know that when the spray is going to uh, come for a conveyor mail type unit. So this one's actually creating um, a moisture within uh, a baking environment and then applying a, a, a coating onto various companies. So we we'll work with uh, leading edge uh, food companies like Kellogg's and Nestle. So our uh, I will design those type of, if, whether they're spraying an oil or a, a type of um, sugar-based product. So we, on, on all those, you've got to make sure that it's not going to clog up or stick because once it's working continuously, that's a customer's product that's going to be affected. Okay, next one. So solid cone, as I said before, um, the nozzle is really uh, designed so it has a, a, a core inside and that's, that's a force fit. And then we have a, a lip that forms over inside it so that the core can't come out and you can't, it's not affected. But what you need to know is how well you want to protect the core. And we have different core materials so we can have the core made in um, a non-corrosive um, material so we can have them made in either hasteloy or plastic or a ceramic uh, so if there's a corrosion issue uh, that product doesn't affect the spray pattern. Um, CM nozzles as I said are, are normally used in a gas scrubbing type they're normally very high flow uh, designs um, the BI nozzle, which is this one here, uh, that's for a straightforward um, cone and we can have the angle of spray chosen to exactly how you want it. If you want 60 degrees or you want 85 degrees, you just need to specify that's how you want it. Or you can let me have a look at the application and I'll design the spray angle uh, dependent on whether you want one or five nozzles within a piece of equipment. The BQ nozzle, again, it's the same sort of core, but then we manufacture the face so that it creates a square. So that's dedicating a, a concentrated area. Again, you, you would probably run that at something like anything between two and, and six bar. They're not really high pressure. Um, then the more to control the spray pattern area. Okay, next slide. So again, um, we'll use them predominantly in either a washing or a dust suppression. So um, we work with uh, GA and uh, we'll look at lots of different environments. So we're just doing um, a refrigerant type project using uh, BN nozzles on solid cones um, and there we're, we're putting them inside a, uh, a condenser so we'll have 21 nozzles in, inside a, a piece and that piece of plant's going to go to sort of like companies like a petroleum company. So we can design different uh, aspects of, of every process and we will then have the, the product tested and our quality uh, to make sure that that spray pattern is being provided. Solid codes are also used in um, fire protection. So uh, we have, there are different 
avenues of how you want that spray, but it's um, it's normally you want them to have a, a, a very wide area so you can increase the, the, the spray pattern area. If you want it to be utilized in a humidification, we can then look at pressure and having uh, a very thin film of the solid cone. So you want to have high atomization with uh, droplet formation. Again, if you want to specify the size of droplet, we can design that aspect for you as well. Okay. So this is just uh, an example of when uh, a customer comes, he wants to know, well, do I have a, a hollow cone? Do I have a solid cone? I have a piece of equipment that we want to be fitting. So we'll then do a cleaning assessment on a piece of equipment and we'll choose the right size of nozzle on the number of nozzles for any given piece of equipment. Okay. So hollow cones, again, um, it depends if you want to have a spray pattern that's got concentrated uh, performance and normally you'll use those in a, a coating environment or you can use them in a water cooling or a, um, a condenser type environment where you want um, the air or your gas to come inside the cone and, uh, and get ev evaporation. So that's where you then control the thickness of the film on the nozzle. And it's an AE type nozzle, it's quite regular. So you can do that with um, a very simple, it's just diverting the flow uh, into the, the main thing and it comes out to at 90 degrees or we use a BJ nozzle which is normally for quite high flow rates and to have a high intensity hollow cone. So each design we can design them to be um, or put into a lance so we, we have different lance designs so if you want it to have it extended or you want it to maintain uh, its performance into a different area. So those are all areas that we, we can look at for you. Next one. Again, it's very similar to solid cone in different uh, in environments of gas scrubbing or we don't really use them in spray drying. We've got um, SDX uh, for that, but some people will use them if they want um, a very basic um, scrubbing type exercise. Okay, thank okay. you. So this shows an application where um, we do um, utilize a, a full scheme of, of nozzles where we've done uh, worked with car companies, automotive, where they want to have a film of of spray so that you can then travel either a, a, a railway unit or a car or a bus. Um, but it's about how do you create that environment? How do you uh, make sure that your nozzles are going to have a, an even spray? I'm even doing one for um, coating um, baking pans at the moment. We'll utilize either that or a um, same sort of hollow cone, but we can use also an uh, airless nozzle with a, a carbide tip in. So there's all different applications. It depends on the atomization of uh, the environment for the, the nozzle that you want to use. Thank you. So flow rate, um, lots of companies always say, well, it's an existing installation. I'm not quite sure what flow rate I have, um, but uh, we have methods where we can assess uh, the flow for you. Next one. Oh, sorry, give me a second. 
There we go. Okay. So within our tables, so we have a, in, within our literature, we have specified um, conditions of at what pressure at which flow. So there's a very basic equation, um, which is Q1 by Q2 with the square root of P1 and P2. So what does that mean? So if you have um, our table and it's got a flow rate of our nozzle at 10 bar and it's 1.45 and you say, oh, actually, um, I've got my plant, I want to have a flow rate of X, but I want it to, to work at an impact pressure of 15 bar. So we look at how much flow. So if we just click the next one, it'll show you the base. So 15 bar divided by 10 bar gives 1.5. And then we utilize that square root of 1.5 times the flow rate of 1.43. We end up with 1.75. So that's how we can calculate the flow. And then that will then decide of whether that flow rate uh, is going to be an issue for that nozzle or whether we need to use the next size up. So, okay, thank you. So droplet size, a lot of people don't realize when they ask for a droplet size, actually how big a certain microns are. So just to give you that idea, we'll go on to the next slide. So you can see here, people will say, oh, I want um, 70 microns. It's actually the thickness of a human hair. Most people will work if they, they want to do a type of coating, we'll work in a sort of between a mist and a drizzle format. So it's either uh, 100 to 300. Now, in order to create a droplet of 300 with a, a normal nozzle, say um, you'll, you'll need to have um, probably about three or four bar. Now, if you want to go smaller than that, or if you want to go aerosol, then you'll need to use a very small aperture type nozzle. So then the orifice becomes tighter. So it's all about controlling the orifice size in terms of the flow rate and the type of environment. But whatever you're uh, controlling atomization, you'll need to also control filtration. If you don't control filtration, you won't get atomization. So it's about um, how that nozzle is going to perform continuously over its working life. Um, and so whenever you have atomization or pressure, you're then going to create wear and corrosion. And those are the things that we're expert in knowing what's, what are the best material choices for that orifice design. Okay. So different spray patterns, uh, again, you know, I've gone over those. Let's also control in the spray width, how to position the nozzle to its application, how wide, um, and there's a formation chart that we can utilize. And I'd, I'd go through that selection process with you of, of knowing where the nozzle's got to be positioned uh, to give you the spray pattern uh, desirable for that design. So some customers also want to have uh, a cleaning impact or they want to descale something or they're using it to flood an, an area. So we can either do that with one nozzle or two nozzles and then it's deciding on uh, which design is going to be uh, the best uh, applicable to your fluid and your flow. So each one has a, an impact in terms of the nozzle angle, how far you have, the um, pressure that you want to utilize, the diameter of the um, spray area. So 
there's all different um, factors that we apply. So that's our, our table. So it's a, a quite easy to, to assess it. What we do need is you to know um, if you've got a high viscous material or what type of specific uh, density, and that will affect the different criteria of the, the final spray impact. Okay. So the type of companies that we work with for um, more than 30 years now. Um, so once we, once we have a reputation, lots of these companies will, will ask engineering companies, right, we want uh, Delavan to select the nozzle format for this machine or this conveyor run or for a painting or a cooling app application. Um, and then we utilize what history they have on that type of environment uh, to apply it. Okay. Fantastic, Mark. So, so we've uh, just a, a note to some of the customers. I saw some hands going up. Uh, just okay, I can do questions now, yeah. What I would suggest is um, we've got another presentation. If you've got a question uh, for customers, if you, if you could type it into the Q&A part, we'll then go through those at the end. Um, we've got an, one more presentation, uh, probably another 15 minutes, and then uh, we'll get into to some of the, the questions that we've got three questions already, some pretty detailed ones. So we'll get to those at the end. And if you've got more questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A uh, and then we'll be able to, to go through those. Um, and also, if you want to ask a question verbally, then we'll open up the, the, the line there at the end. Okay, perfect. So we'll just crack on to the next uh, presentation, um, which I have available here. All right, so let's see how does this look. All right. Mark, go for it. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I think this is this is not the spray dry one though, is it? Is this okay? Uh, no, it's, that's the, the wrong one. Because um, I think that goes on to different other nozzles similar to the one before. Okay. Uh, do you want to just try and share your screen from your side with the, uh, the mm -hmm. spray drying? I'll, I'll stop sharing on my side. Sorry about this, folks. Um, Mark, are you able to just share the, the spray drying then from your side? Okay. Here we are. Fantastic. Okay. So thanks everyone. So Mark, let's get cracking. Okay. So um, again, so Delavan is um, one of the world leaders in uh, spray drying nozzles. So Delavan actually invented um, this swirl and orifice um, design for, to apply with spray drying, it was used by the, the first OEMs uh, and designers. It really started from 1957 and we've accelerated our expertise since then. So we have probably the highest number of OEMs in the world utilizing our spray dry expertise. So uh, we, as said earlier to uh, Donald is that we have currently about uh, 11 OEMs 
uh, in China. We have uh, about uh, seven manufacturers in the USA and we have over 10 uh, OEMs in uh, Europe. So we're very well established and our technology gets selected for, for many. And we do a lot of retrofit, even when people have say rotary atomizing uh, technology. So let me... So, as I said before, we're number one in um, high pressure dairy applications. We're the preferred design leader. And you can see here that we basically started out in 1950 with SDX1. Then we developed a, a mini format. So uh, it's normally used for pilot plants so that you can then scale up uh, to the SDX design. And we also have um, also now companies that we now have the compact version. So after that, we had SDX3 and then SDX5, which is the leading design. Um, and we have a check valve design so that if you want to have a, a non drip facility on your nozzle, then the check valve design is the one that customers choose. So what people are probably not aware of is um, from one litre of, say, milk, you're actually creating one and a half billion droplets. So um, what you want to do is make sure that every one of those droplets has a, a, an equal diameter. Um, and so that's why you need to create a uniform film and a uniform droplet. And that's got to perform continuously for the whole uh, dryer operation. So this is what the uh, setup looks like. So the, there's an entry into the swirl and then you have an orifice. So the swirl <clears throat> is designed to have different mouth openings and seven different um, depths. So we can control the depth of the flow and the mouth. And then the next option is then controlling with pressure with the orifice. And that really enables us to put a thousand multiple different options of designing what type of spray and droplet performance uh, that you'd want to create with your product in order to have the correct drying performance. So what a lot of people don't realize is that the swirling motion actually gives the whole spray and it's swirling within the dryer. Um, it's not just a straight uh, spray down. So that velocity is roughly about uh, 100 meters per second in in terms of the first uh, 500 millimeters out of the nozzle. But in terms of controlling the design, so this is um, the cone based nozzle here. So we can control the angle of the cone, but make sure that you don't get any um, bearding occurring. But the swirl and the orifice are designed so that they're, they're fitted and it makes sure that the central line through the swirl and the orifice stay in absolute motion. And then we have a, a metal to metal seal um, and it's very quick. So one of the, the main things about SDX5 is that you can disassemble it very, very quickly. So that's, that's the nozzle. You could take that, put it onto your lance. Right. 
And those are the components. So within a very quick, the orifice is selected. It's Sorry, Mark. Nose. Yeah. Yeah. All good. That has, a, that has a nose that goes into the face here. Let's raise it up and a little bit there, Mark. The swirl. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Has a nose. Then we have a new um, retaining design, which makes sure that we don't get any clogging. And that's the nozzle reassembled. So basically in 30 seconds, you can assemble it and disassemble it. And that's the main feature of the nozzle rather than using SDX3, which is you need to make sure it's all balanced and, and aligned before you collect it. Now, I just wanted to put this slide up because a lot of people um, always want to, they don't realize about the conditions of the drying air and how the droplet needs to be controlled in size and its shape. And it's also important to know about the other uh, characteristics of um, what the fluid does well, when it's green, does it thicken? Has it got what sort of proteins are in there? What's its viscosity? What's its solid content? Is it changing uh, during processing? And that all affects the droplet size. And then in terms of the drying, how is it? How, are, you, are we optimizing the um, best area within the dryer and do the nozzles need to be realigned to make sure that they get the optimum uh, flow rate. So you've got an air that's got something like two and a half to three centimeters per second. So this is our chart. So uh, again, what she says, we've got 12 sizes of swirl and 240 sizes of orifice. So there's 2,700 combinations that we can have. So I will have a look at uh, process conditions. We'll select a pressure for the flow and the type of product that you want to make. And then I'll put this on a chart and then I'll formalize it with uh, deciding on what size of droplet we need to create from the uh, spray thickness. That's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get a formation of, of, of equal droplets. So it's more important to control that droplet because um, if you use the, if you control the, the diameter of the droplet, you'll control the surface area and you'll control its drying uh, capability. So different fluids break up depending on whether they become sticky or they're in the right area. So these are all key things of, of, of knowing how the product's going to break up away from the nozzle. The critical areas that are around the nozzle, and we know what size the, the product droplet's going to be. So this is our calculator. So I'll put in different aspects of the orifice size, the swirl size, and then the pressure. And then that will then create me a flow rate and I'll, I'll be able to decide what droplet we need to create. Now the, the next thing that's always key is knowing what type of, whether your product is corrosive, whether it's got a wear, if it's got sugars in it that can uh, create accelerated growth. So then we have different material uh, designs where we can have a premium tungsten carbide or a superior, which is more chemical or a standard one. So we can have things to uh, ensure that you, you don't have a, a, a wear characteristics that you need to carry. One of the things with spray drying is it's the only piece of equipment that's changing every day and people are not aware of that aspect that the, the nozzle is is making that dryer change every day if they don't maintain it. Okay. 
So part of that is having knowledge of um, monitoring the wear of the orifice. So we have a special gauge and you've got to also be aware of how to respect um, the orifice. It's tungsten carbide, but we need to make sure that people treat it as if it's made of, of glass because uh, tungsten carbide is a ceramic, it's very brittle. And if it's dropped or you try to clean it and utilize them all together and clean them in a jar together, what will, what will happen is you'll get stress cracking within the hull. So that's why it's important to know what to look for, how to maintain it, how to clean it. And these are all key uh, areas to, to review. So when we look at atomization modeling, again, even between um, air atomizing or pressure design, we can look at the different uh, particle size and droplet size that you want. And that's also knowing what um, the dryer in terms of its evaporation rate. So that's called the energy kinetics that a dryer will have. So it's trying to make sure that if you're evaporating it, you don't trap all the moisture uh, within the droplet. So you can do too fast a dryer and you'll keep all the moisture in. So, so it's key to know the surface area. You've got the cubic relationship of the volume of if you have a change of the diameter too much, it's going to seriously affect the surface volume of your droplet and that uh, will then affect the air volume that you're going to work with. So this is key in terms of looking at how you're having a fast drying or a slow drying and then the shape of the product that you're going to have. So we'll, we'll assess what is the best um, droplet size uh, for you to make your product with. So if you have a, a large dryer, what you will have is sometimes you'll have multiple nozzles. So then the spray formation of the multiple nozzles, we need to know whether you want them to agglomerate or keep them separate. Uh, what's the behavior um, of, of, that, of that product? So we need to know what's the diameter, whether it's a wide body dryer, whether it's a tool format, and those are all areas that uh, I will assess when we're applying different nozzle uh, spray angles and formats. So this is in terms of what happens with agglomeration, if it happens with your product. So key is actually plotting the particle journey that the droplet's gonna have within a dryer. So we'll look at from top to bottom, how, to, how does it form? Are we going to get stickiness? Is it going to cling on to the side of the dryer? And those are all areas that we need to make sure that uh, we know what the glass transition temperature of the product is so that it doesn't become a sticky mess at the bottom of the dryer. So again, once we have a look at your dryer, we look at the PSD. So that's looking at the, the D50. Um, format of, of the nozzle and we can move that along and we can control the shape and the format of the finished product for you. So we can ensure that um, it has quite a tight. The ideal is roughly about two and a half times between the D90 and your D10 and you divide that by D50. And, uh, so there's methodologies of, of of that iteration process that we can share with you. So we can look at different products if it's made on a different dryer, and then we can model that and, and make sure that your other dryer can make the same product uh, in a similar mode. We'll look at the surface area, and those sort of things, remodel it onto the chart, and then have a look at from one product to another product 
So we've done this for quite leading companies uh, around the world where we had a plant that was made in Ireland and then they wanted to make the same product in um, Mexico. So uh, and we made sure that the product characteristics were modeled properly. So another area that we have is when customers say, oh, um, I have got a new product now, but I can't make it on the dryer. So then we have new cluster designs. So uh, this is a cluster format. We use a compact nozzle, or we can use uh, air atomizing designs. So this is um, utilizing all our expertise from swirl air. Um, so we'll look at all those different avenues of, of, of product, whether we need a new uh, lance, we can design the lance to either be thermally controlled as well. So we've done this for companies like Cargill, where we control the temperature of the fluid when it's being uh, atomized. Okay, so these are just options that we've utilized. As I said, um, we've looked at um, doing continuous spray pattern assessment and the iteration process of assessing atomization. That's it. Fantastic, Mark. That's that's brilliant. Thank you for for sharing. Uh, it's great, valuable information um, and, and some questions that will kick straight into it. We ran over a little bit of time there, so we've got about nine minutes. Uh, we'll get through some of these questions um, that have been already posted in the Q&A section. So uh, the first one uh, comes from Ahmed Aris, uh, and his question is, in the spray cooling process, what is the difference or advantage when comparing hydraulic versus atomizing nozzles? Right, so if you're using a, a hydraulic process, so it's about the amount of uh, energy that you're going to utilize. So if you, if you use uh, um, a pressure design, so a pressure design will, you've got to know what sort of droplet you want to create with the pressure, was where um, an air atomizing it's much easier, we have better capability to know exactly what size of droplet you'll have with using um, pressure and air. So um, apart from SDX, but you know, it's all about balancing the two and, and what's available on site, whether you want to utilize air, because air is expensive uh, media as well. Interesting, great. So yeah, th there's that economical calculation that needs to happen as well the equipment you have available and then kind of fix that in through the process depending on which which version you should use okay uh, so from from Ahmed again can a combination of nozzles types and sizes and swirl chambers be selected to minimize product buildup on the chamber wall in a spray cooling process spray cooling um so one you would only in terms of most most spray cooling would use um air atomization because you, you're creating a much finer droplet and you can control the, the spray format so more spray cooling is more utilized with air atomization okay and uh, are there any techniques to prevent product buildup in in the chamber walls if it's air atomizing um there are it's so it's a it's about having a look at the the ergonomics and the um nozzle positioning within that cooler or dryer that you may have so we also work with um a malaysian company who uh, spray upwards to create into a cooling environment and, uh, so those are droplets that are then cooled and then fall down uh, into a fluid bed. Yeah. So yeah, looking at the, the total package and process will help yeah, to so then kind of one, pinpoint one what is you, the real problem. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's all about having a look at the uh, dryer format and the nozzle um, and the, the type of product that they, they, they want to cool or, or, or formulate. Okay. Perfect. Then uh, we've got, so Azmi 
has asked an interesting question here. Uh, to determine the product particle size, uh, do you have simple software which they could use uh, to key in the related parameters, product type, viscosity, temperature, pressure, et cetera, to give recommendations? So is that something you'd have available for customers to use or should they send it directly to, to the other one? It's, it's, we have found it. It's, it's, we did start sending out a CD format, which people used to put into their computer and, and do their own assessment. But uh, customers would make uh, errors in their uh, assessment of, oh, well, I thought I was creating that droplet. Sometimes it's a, a water droplet and not a product droplet. So it's now best that they fill in our form and then we'll do the, the assessment for them. It, it, it doesn't take very long and it makes sure that uh, I've understood all their characteristics and they don't make the error of looking at water droplet and not product droplet. Okay. Perfect. That's, that's great as a service to our customers. So uh, just to note for everybody, I suppose, after this uh, presentation, just to the mailing list, we'll share those uh, forms that would help you to, to complete with the technical information we need to, to support you on a, a selection or a, a troubleshooting process. Um, and Dalavan offers that service. So we'll get back to, we'll shoot those out on email after this presentation. Okay. Um, so a couple of process questions here is one of them, um, is there particle atomization, does it affect the density? So Yuganesh has asked us, particle atomization, does it affect density? No, it doesn't. No. So whatever density is in the, the, the product, the density um, of how it breaks into droplets is affected by it's its overall solid content that makes up that that density um if it's got um again we have the uh, glass transition temperature of, of the product and those are those are aspects that can uh, influence uh, the final production of of what size of but the nozzle will not affect the density of, of the product so those are things it's about um, how you take the temperature of the fluid into the dryer or any process that will have its final impact. So people with a high, high density um, may want to increase the fluid temperature before they atomize it. Perfect. So the, the, again, down to the process control. So uh, the filtration, the the solids that are in it, the temperature of the process, these all affect um, yeah, the end result. So important to have a holistic uh, view. Yes, it depends on uh, the level of instrumentation that's on the plant. So, so like um, I, I dealt with um, a Chinese plant that was had, I was trying to formulate a very small uh, powder for paint. Um, you know his his fluid temperature was too high when he was when he was atomizing. When we actually cooled his uh, product, we then found that we can make a really fine powder for him. So it's it's knowledge of knowing how the plant has been set up. Fantastic. So uh, Mohammed Azmi has asked a question around uh, just a quick recommendation on product type would be what is the best nozzle type suitable for dust suppression in coal handling? In coal handling. So all, all you need on dust suppression are AC nozzles. So uh, you can either use an AC or uh, an AN. So one thing you have with uh, coal compression is that you, what will happen is um, the washing process of the air, uh, you're going to get residual spray coming out. And what happens is that it picks up dust again, and you've got to make sure that with an AN, there's there's nothing to so that, that's a, there's nothing that's going to stop the, the uh, product. So you just select the, the size of the orifice that's that's geared for that type of uh, particle um, involvement if you're going to get 
dust involved into the water or your um, suspension material. Fantastic. And then Yuganesh, again, we've got a two more questions I think we can get through here. So uh, with a check valve type nozzle, oh, yeah. uh, how, how will this affect the flow and nozzle pressures? So it won't, it won't affect um, the pressure or performance of the nozzle. So a check valve design, okay, so uh, the, the, the mostly used where a, a customer wants to stop, stop the process and they don't want the nozzle to drip. So the check valve is basically a, a, a function where it's got a, a, a gasket and a plunger at the back of the nozzle and it stops the nozzle from uh, taking any more fluid. And normally you can assess, you can play with that between two and five bar, depending on what sort of parameters you have uh, on the lance area. Okay, fantastic. So those check valves are great, yeah, to stop the, the, the dripping afterwards and... Yeah, so customers, if again, if you, if, if you stop the process and then they do a clean up and they process, to change all the nozzles, the last thing they want is then the nozzle to start uh, dripping milk or, or, or whatever product into the dryer once they've cleaned it. Fantastic. So final question uh, that I think we can over time a little bit, but uh, bear, bear with us. Um, so one of our, our customers has asked something more around some of the OEMs that he knows. So what are the advantages in comparing some of the key players in the market like Alpha Laval, Equit Flex, SA, Xair, Lecher, Firetech, Spraytech systems and Sprain systems? Uh, I'm assuming he's, he's labeled some, or referenced some of the OEMs um, in the marketplace. How would Dalavine fit into, into, this, into this place? Okay, so when, um, when a customer says, oh, we've got uh, this design of nozzle, um, we have a, a vast majority of their catalogs, so like a spraying system that they say, Ours is an orifice size um, 92,000, and we've got a core size 16. We can have a look at exactly what, what flow rate, what pressure, and what spray pattern that nozzle will perform. Um, we then simply mirror that uh, spray pattern and, and, and nozzle performance to one of our nozzle selection criteria. So we do that on a, on a regular basis. Fantastic. So there is that interchange capability. So whatever OEMs you might have, uh, competitors that you're using uh, out there, our customers, please, you're welcome to share the information. We could offer an interchange uh, to give you a solution uh, to some of the problems you might be having uh, to give you extended lifetime and uh, obviously reduced total co cost of ownership. So brilliant. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. Um, okay. and, and Thank you for joining us. I know it's early hours in the UK there. Um, no, it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed it, actually. So it's been, uh, value your time. To, to share some information with you. Excellent. And uh, we'll reach out with, with uh, some of these slides to our customers. Uh, if you do have more questions, please feel free to reach out to us by email or phone call. Uh, we're happy to, to support you. And uh, thank you. We'll meet you all again soon. Okay. Thank you. And uh, hopefully I may meet uh, your customers uh, shortly. Absolutely. My... As borders start opening, yes. As borders start opening, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Mark. Cheerio. Bye bye.